I've been waking at 10 minutes close Another email that I ain't replied to Another Yo, what's going on? Welcome to Premier Battles I go by the name of Bison Briggs One of the co-owners of the company with Shotty Horror As we're all in lockdown at the minute with the coronavirus Obviously scheduling has slowed down And we've got a lack of battles coming out So this is something we've thought about doing for a while And it's sort of lined up perfectly for time we can do it That being said, I am joined today by a fellow Mancunian Probably the most annoying person in battle rap. Uh, if you don't know who this guy is and you're on the forums and all that, where's your life been? This guy, definitely the most annoying person in battle rap. Would you say you would you say that? Yeah, one million percent, definitely the most annoying. <laughs> What's going on, Jan? You I, going? Might, I, might even, I might even have the, like, the title of most hated now. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. There's a few that I've got the most hated title. But yeah, <laughs> first, first of all, bro. Uh, how is everything your side? Because obviously everyone is locked indoors. Everyone good on your end? Yeah, do you know what? I'm actually like flourishing during lockdown. I've lost a shitload of weight. I've been actually working on some music again, which is just weird because I've not done that since, well, since I was back with R8 too, if you remember. Um, and just been working from home. I'm, I'm one of the fortunate ones. The job that I do is classing the key worker. So I'm still getting paid and still working from home, so I'm doing all right. You missing the events? Oh, madly, massively missing the events. Because even like, even though the Premier Battles ones have slowed down and a bit more spaced out now, there's like the other ones. I even everyone knows me for the Battle Rap event. I'm pretty much going to be there. So even like the lack of dub scandal events and stuff like that, it's just cool. Because yeah. I was on a crack when I met them anyway. It's mad, isn't it? Because like last year we did, even though we slowed down. So the first year we did 11 events, I think it was, in total. So we did an event a month, pretty much. Year two we did, I think it was nine events. So pretty much nearly an event a month again. This year we've only done Undisclosed, which you and Blood Show, your sort of first event you did together. Uh, mm. How did that go up? Did you find it mad running? Because obviously I wasn't even there. I wasn't even in the building. So was it difficult? Um... Nah, do you know what? Because obviously everyone will have known for the last year or so, I've been like shadowing you around events, helping you out and doing the big ones. Like when we did the smaller ones, like the Ruby Lounge and stuff like that, uh, it was good. And then the fact that we did Apex and All Star, like big events, I think that prepared me well, especially Apex, because you'll remember me running, <laughs> just didn't yeah. stop running for the whole day. Um, it, it got me prepared for it. So the small event, uh, like on this quote, was cool. And obviously, I got a lot of time to stroll. Like it's just easy. It was just easy working with you guys. So for me, it wasn't wasn't difficult. It was it was different hosting rather than actual battling yeah. and having to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> so I was uh, was different. But no, I, I really enjoyed it. It was like it was a, it was a cool thing. So it was a good day. I don't think there was a single bad battle on the card either. Like, I think every every battler um, possibly came with some of the best stuff that they've come with. I know, like, Darpa, Darpa killed it. Uh, Celeste killed Split. And LSD actually won a battle. So, you know, that shows how good the day was if LSD can actually win a battle. What do you prefer? Do you prefer the battle at all? Do you prefer sort of the hosting, the admin side of it? Um, Oh, that's a tough question. Like, I love, I love the hosting side of things because there's no pressure on me to perform. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, the persona that I've built up and stuff like that, um, I'm, I get scrutinised when I'm battling, even for like, even mispronouncing a word, I'll get scrutinised on that. Whereas the hosting side of things, it, there's, there's not as much scrutiny. Um, so, for, Peace of mind sake, I prefer hosting. Yeah. But for the actual experience, I, I do like there's nothing better than especially me, the way I get scrutinized, there's nothing better than when I say something good and people react to it. Yeah. So that feeling I'm always gonna want to chase that feeling. But yeah, nah, the the hosting side's really cool. I do enjoy that. Yo, have you battled this year? Because you had Danny mm -hmm. Jack, obviously, which fell through. Con yeah, Con Man, was Con Man this year or was it the back end of last year? Yeah, Con, Man, Con Man was January. Fucking hell. So that's so really the only events he's actually been this year is Rap is Full. Broken and, Resolution, Undisclosed. Yeah, fuck. Is there any, there's no flop not done an event this year. I don't fucking know. I don't watch no flop. 
Yeah, they did. They, I did, they did the Yunnan and uh, Craft D title match. Who won that? Craft D won that. Craft D's the champion. Uh, <laughs> crafty sick mate um, so you I don't, know, I only watch Don't Flop stuff if there's people like my friends are involved in it like, I always I always support a canal battle because I get on the canal um, Yunnan like me and Yunnan like really got on in Ireland in it so that's like, I always check his stuff out and yeah. if Jay ever battles but other than that if there's no one that I'm like friends with I don't really check that stuff out well I just think that is just, just have an interest in watching it or um, I just think it's it's a bit it's like it's almost too little too late in my eyes. Like we all knew when everything happened and he who shall not be named did what he did, that he would try and make a comeback and yeah, it is needed for the competition side of things, but I don't for me it's not he's come back and he's just looked at what other people have done and gone, right, how can we be different? Right, we'll do it in the middle of butt fuck nowhere and try and get a massive crowd. Which, fair play, if you get a massive crowd in the middle of butt fuck nowhere, then sick. Yeah. But it's just like the battle is like, red flag and raptor happened, and then all of a sudden, red flag's like main event in on that card. Um, the one thing I will say that I have noticed is some of the people that are slowly coming back, um, for example, I know, I think Big J's coming back, which obviously Big J's, like, if you don't know who Big J's, you don't really watch Battle Rap Media, so. Things like that are good, but it's just the aesthetic and the way the events are run and not how I enjoy watching Battle Rap. Do you think it's different because, like, you got involved in Battle Rap after all that shit happened with Dope Flop? Yeah. I was always a fan, but I got involved afterwards, yeah. So how did you take, so for example, I'm just playing devil's advocate, devil's advocate here. What's your issue with don't flop if he was never involved in don't flop? Does that make sense what I'm asking? Yeah, yeah no, 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 it makes, makes sense. It's not that I have an issue with don't flop. It, it's just like, cause obviously there's people like, you you can testify to this. I'm loyal to a detriment in it. Yeah. I'm over loyal sometimes. And there's things that people have said to me, like friends of mine, that they've been, had this done or they've had that done. And it's... For me, like other like, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, like other battlers have said things. It's like, well, if this person's going to do this, I'm, I, I don't want to support and put money in their pocket, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I will, I will actively avoid going to their events and avoid watching their because even like we, we know views and stuff, especially with the subscriber base that that channel has. Um views get that person's money. Yeah. So to me it's just like it was, it was it, and it's nothing against the person 'cause I've I've met her. I've I've met her and you know what I got on with him. Um yeah. I met him met him in Burnley, got on with him, he was he was a cool guy, like we had a good night and had a laugh and that. Um but as a businessman, I think his, his business acumen and the way that he handles business is wrong because he sees everybody as a transaction in my eyes. And yeah. that, for me, that's like, you can't, you've got to have the, it's a thin line to walk. Like sometimes that you and Trotty can be overly friendly with certain battlers and let certain battlers get away with things. And that is going too far the other way. Whereas Rowan seems to treat everyone as a business transaction. So he's trying to find that happy ground. Yeah. So, bear in mind, I'm just playing devil's advocate, devil's advocate between the whole thing. So, uh, being someone that's never done business with Rowan yourself, because I know these battlers that say me and Shotty do bad business. I've, I've already heard stories of people saying we do bad things. Da, 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 da. I, have, I have actually nearly done business with her. I have nearly done business with her. There was that, that, yeah, that night that I met him, um, it was just after the me and Blue Foot battle came out. Yeah. And obviously, for, for a tryout, that did rather well. So we had a conversation. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll sort you with Don't Flop Battle. Da, da, da. And I think I remember asking you, saying, look, Thursday, <coughs> do you want to do a Don't Flop Battle? So, and yeah. you were like, cool, you, it's good. You'll get the numbers. You'll do this. So it's, it's good for you. Go and do what you've got to do. So, and then he hit me up and he was like, yeah, we're going to do this trial by combat and have a two-round battle 
and the footage won't be coming out. It'll just a highlight. Yeah. And I, in my head, that was like, well, this wasn't what you said to me a month ago. And I've already sort of done that. So why do I? Like, and this is probably me thinking the wrong way at the time. It was like, well, why would I want to do that? That takes the piss a bit. So your, your issue was you didn't want to travel down to an event to battle and not have any content come out. Exactly, yeah, that was, that was it. And I thought it was just, because the conversation, we had two completely different conversations yeah. about what I don't thought Battle for Yannis would be. It was like, well, hold on, you're just switching up now. And it just made me think, like, with everything that I'd heard as well, this is the guy that does it, so he'll, he'll say one thing and then a month later it'll be something completely different. Yeah, so you already had a pre-person. That's, that's another reason why you, you'll never see me. You, I can't say never because you never say never, but the way it is, I personally wouldn't want to do business with that person just off that one interaction where it changed instantly. Yeah. That makes, that's For example, whenever, you, whenever you've booked me, it's always been this person, this, this, done, and it never changes. Like, unless the person drops out or anything like that, it, it, it never changes. It'll always just be what it is. See, the reason I'm asking is, obviously, take me out of the equation of being Premier Battles League owner, yeah? I know yeah. these battlers out there that'll go, I'm not working with Premier Battles because they do bad business, yeah? There is, battle, there is battlers that will say that because they fell out of us over bullshit, whatever it is. For me, business is a transaction. So if you've, this isn't saying you as Yana Taylor, this is a battle. If you're paid and the agreement is you turn up to do a battle for free, it's not really a business transaction, it's a promise of, Come to my league, I'll get you this. Now, Rowan or Ur would have said, you can come on to Don't Flop, I'll give you a battle. Then he's contacted you saying, do this tryout tournament. In your head, you've already got an idea that you're going to do an actual free round battle for the channel. Yeah. And then you've been promised something else off the back of that. And that's made you go, no. So I get where you're going for. Like You've already got the precursor in your head that the rumours you've heard, this guy does bad business. And the one incident you've had with him hasn't turned out the way you wanted it to turn out. Is that sort yeah. of where you're at with it? Yeah, that, that, that's sort of where I'm at with it. Like I said, I've got no, no issues with the guy. I said, I had a yeah. very good night. He's actually like, a cool guy to be around. And obviously, I was a fan of battling before I started battling. So no one can ever knock what the guy did to get UK battling where it was. No one can ever knock that. However, just the way it sort of went when he was at the top, yeah, it, it, it doesn't sit well with me, and that's, that's just me. Just some, some people could say all, some people could say it is, but that's just me as a person, and it. If if my interaction hasn't gone the way that I expected it to, and it's made me think a type of way, and there's a lot of other people that I'm close to have the same sort of opinion, then there's no way that all of us are wrong. Do you know what I'm? Do you know what I'm saying there with that one? Yeah, no, of course, I get what you're saying. I think the thing is, is by the way, I'm not, I'm not sitting here saying, oh, defending don't flop. I'm just trying to be neutral to Premier Battle yeah, yeah. and everyone else. I could sit here and just say, oh, yeah, there's shit. But it's not my real thing. <laughs> was the whole thing, you know what I mean? So I know these other leagues that have done probably worse business than Rowan has ever done in the sense of with battlers, maybe not as the Kruger issue and all that. That's aside from all this. That's just friendship gone that way. I think yeah, they yeah. Like, deserve an opinion on that are, people that were directly offend, uh, affected by that. So it's yeah. interesting to, for someone like yourself, because you're not the only one, yeah, and there is other people like this who weren't around when Don't Flop as a battle or weren't around as a, an MC to go, yeah, fuck Don't Flop, I'll never work with Don't Flop because of this that happened when I wasn't a part of this. Does that make sense? Like, I've, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had conversations with people that will go, yeah, I'm, I'll never go on Don't Flop because of what happened, and I'll go, all right, well, you already tried out two weeks ago so what's <laughs> your issue because I'm trying to see it from take my own personal opinions and don't flop out the window because I know there's people that'll do this with Premier Battles there'll be people that'll have done a tryout on don't flop and then gone I'll never battle for Premier Battles fuck them because I've been on don't flop like okay what what's your reasoning to that if it's someone like I don't know just use an example if it was dialect for example he might have had an issue with Rowan before all this had happened then it's happened, and then he's gone, yeah, I'll, I won't work with him again because of previous disagreements, previous things. But he's been through the process of working with him, whereas you can make your own assumption from that. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
so, like I said, I'm probably I'm probably very close on it, and it, people will probably not agree with my opinion and think that I'm a dick. But your opinion opinion. Makes sense. Your opinion makes sense because you said, you know, you was offered one thing, and it the outcome of that was something completely different. So you've had you've been through the rigmarole of having a conversation with him at least. Um, whereas, like I say, there is battlers out there that I've never even spoke to me and shot you and gone fuck Premier battles. I'm I'm don't flop. I won't work with them. Like until you've had the conversation and made a dialogue with us. Why? Um, there's, a, there's a few people I've had conversations with now um, that I'm very iffy about working with again. Yeah. Um, and not because not because the battles didn't go well or the battles didn't go down or anything like that. It's just for me, it, it's a, it's saturation as well. It's like oversaturation as well in terms of like. Fair enough, I'm probably thinking way outside my box and way ahead of like the level that I'm at and stuff like that. But the way that I see it is like it's like a brand a brand type thing. If you know that whenever a card's coming out from a different league, that people are gonna expect your name to be on it, there's not gonna be that hype to see that battle because they're gonna expect it to be on it. So yeah. if you take someone like and this is no disrespect to him because he's he's a he's a good mate, man, but you see Sean O'Mac, for example, yeah. Sean O'Mac will battle on every league yeah. Danny Jack he's the one he'll battle on every uh, every league and if you expect them to be on that card every single time there's no the, the, it sort of kills the excitement and the anticipation to see that person battle yeah, of course so for, for, for my point of view one of the things that I said to myself when I started um, obviously I started on King of the Ronald but we know the reason that Balky offered me that battle is you asked me to do the second year academy and I'd never battled so I wanted to our respect to you and our friendship that we've had over the years. I didn't want to jump into something if I didn't know whether I could do it or not. Yeah. So that's why I went to do the, the trial on King of the Ronald. The academy was already sorted. I was I was fearing that, and then I got asked to do the T Y the Poet Battle in in Ireland. After that first sort of six month involvement, the way that I wanted to keep it so that I didn't just take every battle and battle for every single league and stuff like that was. Okay, for at least this first year, the only two places you are going to get to see a Yamas battle is Premier Battles or Rafi's Full. Yeah. And that, that was, I know I did the one rounder against Phil Brian, but that was, that just happened. I was in Ireland at the time. They had a world of dropout. And I was, I was there. So I was like, right, I'll do this one rounder for you, help you guys out. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> for me, I, I, I love battling in Manchester. And I know there's no other league that's going to do an event in Manchester. <laughs> yeah. I want to stick with PB. And obviously, the, the fact that I've stuck with PB and done what I've done has led me to a position now where I'm doing stuff that I enjoy doing in terms of, yeah, I get the odd battle here and there. But at the same time, I'm also at all the big events helping you guys out, which is teaching me how to. To, to, to run events and stuff like that which then takes the pressure off you, Strove, Shotty and whoever because you've got an extra person there you're like, like Yann will go and help out, Yann will do this Yeah, yeah, makes sense Saturation's a massive thing uh, I think it works both ways a little bit as well though, like if you're new to it I like I get a lot of newcomers that I mess with me going oh, I'm going to go and do a battle on Don't Flop while I wait for, like saw what you did I'm going to go and get a battle on Don't Flop while I wait for the academy to start because I'm going to join the academy is that okay? For me as a promoter, that's mint for me because I get to see what you're like before you step on Premier Battles. So if you go if you go to King of the Ronalds, Dub Scandal, Don't Flop, Rap is Full, whatever, I get to watch your content before it, you come to my channel because if you come to my channel unprepared and you choke yeah. up, up, the chances of you getting booked again on my channel are unlikely. Whereas if you've yeah. gotten one, two or three battles elsewhere, then come to us and gone, I'm ready for Premier Battles now. That's good for me. Obviously, you get the you get the exceptions, you get your major concerns, your visuals, like people that have never battled before. The Academy is a great platform to push people through a competition format. Plus, you'll get to battle different styles where you probably wouldn't in any other league format. Um, the thing with the Academy is half of these people are new. So if you're an up-and-coming battler yourself, you go into a competition, it's not just like me going, do you want to battle this guy on this day? Then you can go, nah, I'm not feeling it. In the Academy, you have to. So... You can end up going yeah, yeah that's, that's one thing that I loved, loved about the academy. 
And that's why I'm glad that I, um, that I did it. Because at the end of the day, I didn't want to battle Zeb- Zebedee. Didn't happen for, for his reasons. He couldn't make it. Yeah. And I didn't want to battle Graza. I really did not want to battle Graza. Graza wanted to battle me. I didn't want to battle him. Um, I learned so much. Obviously, I lost to Graza. And the reason I lost is because I didn't want to battle him. But I had to. And at the end of the day, I still, I still was all right. I didn't like choke three rounds or anything like that. I still got three rounds out, um, prepared for it, and it was a good battle. But it learned, it taught me the fact that it's not all about what I want to do. Sometimes I'm going to have to take a battle that I don't want to get to where I need to in the future. Oh yeah, you've got to go through these. I, obviously, I battle, I've been battling for. 11 years now and I battled people I never had any interest in battling but I knew what the end game was I knew if I, if I beat him I'll get him and if I beat him I'll get that event like leading up to Manchester versus London I knew I had to win one or two battles to get on the Ritz stage or I had to do this to get onto the Test 10 or like there was big events coming up and with the Academy the purpose is you get to open up the All-Star game which we've had Sol versus Ilmac and Shotty versus John John so you get to be on cards you never would be on um, exactly. That that was the that was the one gutting thing about the last Graza, like the way that that All Star card went. Um, now, in, in in terms of my personal opinion, I think the right two people did make the final. Um, yeah. I think the first year's final was a lot better than this year's final. Yeah. In terms of the actual battle itself, but I think. The four right people in the two years of the academy yeah. have made that final stage and been the right people to make it. And that, and even second year, it's hard for me to say that because in my head, when I started the academy, I wanted to go all the way to the final. I watched it yeah. and like the text messages you will have got off me like when I'm four o'clock in the morning, it's up in the phone going, I'm gonna kick it, <laughs> so I'm gonna be on that stage. Yeah. And the last of other, like I said, another learning curve for me was that's not me back and. Um, yeah, I've still got the con man battle, which I, I think I lost. I'm just no point in me even. I think I think he did. Yeah, no, I, I'll be honest. I agree. I think con, that was the best con man I've seen. Um, mm-hmm. I think he, I think you need, what? in my opinion, watching that battle, you need three rounds like your first. Yeah, it's like you lost a bit of steam towards the back end. What I think, just just by talking to you now. I've said this to you a few times, but one thing I noticed you need to stop doing is reacting to your opponent because you're, oh, them, <laughs> you're giving them fire. Like when he was doing the whole shut up Yana thing and you're all joining in, it just enforces that you're the yeah. idiot in this round. Yeah. Like, dial up. Like, imagine, look, let's take Shotty and John John. Imagine John John was saying stuff to Shotty and Shotty's going jumping up and down, going, yeah, this is sick. Yeah. It just makes the person that's getting this look like, the idiot, like, I'm the clown here, like, it's hard to do sometimes. Yeah. People said stuff to me and I've gone, that's fine. Well, yeah, so, to be fair, though, I agree as well with the Academy 18 and 19. I think the right four people made the finals. I think there could have been an argument for Bizzo. Uh, there was a couple of people that thought Bizzo beat Milky in the semis. But I was there on the day and I thought Milky just held the room better. Um, Bizzo's obviously, I'm a big fan of Bizzo anyway. But, that even I could a lot of people thought I could beat major concerns in 2018 as well. Um, no, nah. I remember on the day, I, but I could, I, I, I could quality, yeah, I like I could, but for me, I think I think major took that because I, I was right there, and that was the first time you let me on stage. As well. <laughs> what was that? Match yeah, match that five on it? yeah, yeah, it's match day five, Raptor and Gojo, yeah, but yeah, I think the right four made it. I think to be fair, I think the right winners were decided on the day uh, you know I'm not going to lie going into each final I thought Visual was going to beat Milka and I thought uh, Major was going to beat LSD um, so I've called it wrong both times but that's testament to the two people that won it Milky was pretty much flawless throughout the entire tournament Visual obviously got knocked out against Leicester but uh, my personal opinion I thought it was the wrong decision so it was good that he came back when yeah I think that was a, I, think, I do think that was a dodgy a dodgy decision on that one and um, there was a there was a few, there was a few um because the the way that the draw was done this year was it it hindered it hindered the two picks because the two the first two picks because Tox and obviously Dialect got a pick they had yeah. to battle each other first 
Now, oh, everyone knows the story about Will, me and Will. We're not going to go into all that. But Will is a good battle. He is a good yeah, battler. He's that's a the really way that good battler. It wasn't, it wasn't whoever they picked battled each other. We just do it. We drew. That's what I'm saying. The draw that. screwed him. Yeah, it came The draw up. screwed him because you picked it out. It's part of the academy, though, isn't it? Like, the thing is, with the academy set up is, if you're going to win the tournament, you should be able to beat everyone you put against. It doesn't matter yeah. the first round or the final. You're in there because you're the champion of it. Um, like, you know, you could you could turn around and say, oh, if LSD would have drew major in the last 16, would major have made the final or would LSD have made the final? It's, you know, you can only beat who you put in front of. And if, yeah, if yeah. obviously, Bizzle's a seasoned vet at this. Um, but at the same time, when Bizzle came back, his confidence wasn't where it is now. So he was beatable on the day. Uh, just obviously, he took the win. What, right. What, it, what Bizzo did to Deviant. Oh, yeah, it was great. Deviant's not a bad battler either, but... Oh, that was like that was just incredible from Bizzo. Um yeah. I think with the Academy nineteen look, final, the only thing that made it suffer was the crowd. The difference between eighteen final and nineteen final was the crowd. Like the eighteen uh, major and LSD, the venue was sold out. Fr- not sold out. Sorry, it was. I think it was like forty tickets left. But from front to the back of the wall, people were in at twelve o'clock. The battle went on with a full crowd, and you can tell from the footage where there's. Um, milky and visual. I wanted to put on later, but Villain showed up late, like two and a half hours late. Um, Serious Jones hadn't turned up yet. There were so many people that didn't turn up. And then we had the big issue with the guards, uh, the security at Steel Yard searching everyone, which took like two hours to get everyone in the venue. So it was just an awkward vibe. But obviously, they're booked to be the opener of the event. It doesn't matter if there's 10 people in there. At some point, the show's got to start. Um, yeah. So they felt the sacrifice of that, which I thought damaged the battle. But if you actually listen to the bars, the bars are crazy. If we would have put that on any other event, they'd have gone off. If we would have put that at Apex, they'd have got a good reaction. Um, yeah. But it's a shame that that's happened. So it's hard for me to say 2018 final was better than 19 final, just because I think the crowds added to it massively. Oh, one, one, minute, one minute simple. We all know that one of the best crowds that we've, we've had taking Apex out of consideration you take apex out because that, that was such a weird event and everything like that yeah fucking but hell. You, that ruby that ruby lounge crowd for every ruby lounge event that i was at because yeah. i think i did three or four ruby lounge ones so we did because I, I did i did, did the four, first all star yeah. i did match day five first all yeah i did two sorry two i did yeah. two match day five and the first all star Match day five, the crowd was phenomenal up until obviously yeah, Rapture and Koji yeah. had the little issue fit. Um, and the all star crowd from I think the only the only dip in the first all star crowd was was it Pedro and no, that was match day five, Pedro and Zen for East Island. What, what was the one? Was it, was it Giz that was on the all star? That who was on what battle five. was on the all star was. Soul ill match. Oh, sorry. The only the only dip was obviously Mike P and Koj didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. And Mike P did his, did his two rounds, and even then the crowd was still receptive to what Mike was saying. Yeah, but yeah. It, that was the only dip throughout the whole day. Because the whole card, because people don't realise, but the All Star game, we've had some shit luck with big events like um, the sponsor we had for the All Star game backed out four or five days before. Well, they didn't back out; it just vanished. Um, so we was like 10 grand down four days before the event started. Um, so we managed to save that. But then Big Cannon backed out against Rivers. Cole J no-showed against Mike P. Um, we also had, it was meant to be O'Shea versus Andy Ellis from This Is England. They was going to yeah. be a battle for TV. Um, that fell apart. And then there was one more. Was there one more? No, dialect low, so it still happened. But dialect had that drama, didn't it? Oh, yeah, that, yeah, so Dialect went through a lot of personal stuff and we thought that was going to not happen. Uh, obviously, shouts to Dialect because it came through. But, so we had Dialect, Low Soul, Chris Lees, Caustic, Ilmac, Soul, and the Academy Final. So we had four battles from a, from a seven-battle card that actually went down. Um, fucking hell, our big events just have no luck, did it? But, I, mate, I remember being in that apartment before Apex. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I don't think I've ever seen you so stressed. Oh mate, even Madflex, like how bad was the Madflex situation? Twenty four oh, hours. That was that was literally we were just sat there 
you, I was like, what about this? What about this? What about this? Can we do this? Can we do that? I thought you were going to chin me at one point. Oh, mate, it was getting heavy, wasn't it? But then I was, yeah, it's just, Apex is another thing. But from your perspective, be honest as you want as well, what, what did, what did the academy do for you? Do you think it was a good move for you? Or do you think it was you would have rather have done something else? I, I think it, I think it was a great move for me in terms of it killed this e it killed the ego that I thought I had. Yeah. In terms of because I took I took that loss to Graza, <clears throat> um, and I didn't I didn't walk through it the way that in my head I was going to do it. Yeah. Um, so it it humbled me a bit in the sense of, right, now it's going to be harder for me to get to the apexes, the all-stars. It's, I've got to work harder and I've got to proper hone in on it. So I'm grateful that I did it. Um, it, it the, the one negative side was I had two battles lined up that I didn't really want people that I didn't want to battle. But again, on the flip side to that is you've got to learn to battle people that you don't want to battle. You've got to do sometimes these things so yeah, no, I think it, I think it's a great idea, especially for someone who, like me, had watched Battle Rap for years, never decided to do it. Um, then I went and did it. It got me it, from the academy performances that I had. I got certain opportunities that I wouldn't have got if I hadn't done it. Yeah, and I'd have just tried to go and get battles elsewhere and stuff like that. Okay. All we could do as a league is facilitate your platform, get the shot, uh, the content filmed and set everything up around you. It's up to the battler to turn up prepared and spit your eyes. We can't do them elements for you. So if a battler turns up, stumbles, and then his footage doesn't come out, don't be inboxing me going, where's my battle? Like, I'm not putting that out. It's not representing me. It's not representing the academy. It's not... But anyway, we have a sponsor to the academy as well. So their brand goes on it. They don't want to watch you choke for three rounds. Like... That's, what, that's why I, I, I was so annoyed with... Because obviously... I didn't get the pick this time to go straight through. So I had to do the qualifier, which I wanted to do. I wanted to do the qualifier. And I think I'm not being, if I go back and watch that now on the network, though two of them two rounds I did against Rubik's are probably still two of my better rounds that I've done yeah. throughout any of my battles, but nobody's seen it because obviously he choked both his rounds. Yeah. And it was the, it was a qualifier thing. But at the end of the day, I still showed up, did what I had to do, knowing full well that it was just two rounds and they were just going on the network. Yeah. And then you've got people who got in bigger opportunities that are just going to, nah, fuck it, can't be asked going. And yeah. it, that's, the, that's the annoying thing about me. The quality, like, you guys have always tried to put so much onto quality control, but there's only so much you guys can do. Like, if, if you're giving opportunities and then people who, fair enough, for example, um... Who, who, who had a bad choke this year and never choked before? Someone had a bad choke this year and never choked before. So every battle you've watched, they've always come, they've always improved. Da, 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 da. Then they've choked in the academy. Yeah. And it's just like, wow. Yeah, yeah we've had a few. We've had a, look at the first year. You have Cold Fair, Riser. Like, these are the established battlers. Neither of them made it through to the next round because they choked. Rubik's an established battler. These are people that have been on four to five leagues. Um, so that's one thing we try to do with the academy. It doesn't matter what you've done elsewhere. If you can't do it in our pit, in our format, that's all that matters. It doesn't... I don't care if you've won 12 battles on King of the Ronalds. Like, you know what I mean? Come here, this is your chance to be on a tournament. If I can't ask you to turn up and spit two clean rounds, 60 seconds, I'm not going to trust you to go on the stage at All-Star and open up three rounds in front of, you know, if it, for the first year, three, four hundred people. Um mm. It does get some people. Some people are just not built to spit on stages. I, some some of my favourite battlers, I, I, you know, I won't mention names, but some of my favourite battlers I wouldn't book if it was at a stage event, and they're my battlers I love to watch just because I know they won't handle the stage better than they would a pit. Yep. Uh, and it, and it, it also goes the other way. There's there's other battlers that are absolutely phenomenal on a big stage that'll be absolutely terrible in a pit format. Of course, yeah. Definitely, hundred percent. So there's, there's, there's big stage battles that have happened where me, even me and you, we've been stood there, we've looked at each other and gone, this would have been so much better in the pit. Oh, a million percent, yeah. I, see, I prefer battling on stage I, as a person, only because of, I'm used to being on stage. Uh, but I do like pit, and I've always been out of handle a pit. Um, I think pits are easier than stage. A stage, you, you've got everyone's eyes are on you. In a pit, you just, you're looking at your opponent, that's it, really. 
You know people are around. I think, I think I think for me, I've not done a big I've not done a big stage per se. Yeah. I've done a couple of stage ones, like the Ronalds one was on stage and uh me versus Conman was on stage. Everything else that I've done is either done a pit or like the small room one. Yeah. Oh sorry, no, a battle that the one round against Sub Brian as well in the international that was on stage. Yeah. But for me, the best atmosphere in a battle that I've had was against T Y at Broken Resolutions one. That yeah. was just because that venue was so sick with a retractable roof, you could smoke in there and that, and it was sold out. Um, one thing I do what I do before I do stop battling, not that I've got a plan of stopping, but it's one of them. It's it, I'd take it or leave it out. I definitely want to try and do a big stage before I start battling because yeah. I want to have that experience. Because obviously, I've you know, I've done shows like sold out Gorilla because you guys were on it, me and Obi did. Uh, a set there and yeah. stuff like that and I want to know battling and performing on stage you just get that same sort of high you yeah. know what I mean stages stage so that's one thing that what, what, moving forward I desperately want to do is I do want to do a big stage battle what do you think you're missing Jan because obviously you're like if you're being honest now what, what's your record like actual wins the losses consistency do you think that's I'm all? not consistent through all three rounds just being consistent yeah, I think I think if you if I go back over all of my battles, my first round is all my first or my third round is always very good. Yeah. But then a dip in the middle every time. So again, for example, against Conman, my first round was real like the first round was probably the best round I've ever ever wrote so far. Yeah. My second and third just didn't match up to it. Yeah. Now, on the flip side that if I'd have put that first round last, I still don't think it'd have changed anything. Yes, it wasn't a I think, I think, so still I, think I just need I just, I just need to have three whole rounds. Now obviously you know the two battles that I've got coming up. Yeah. And that is one thing that I'm massively working on is to make sure that all three rounds are, are, are consistent. Yeah. Um and now I'd like to say I've got I've got I've stopped doing what I used to do, which was I'd send rounds to anyone and anyone that'd listen. Yeah. Whereas now I'm very selective with people who hear what I've got. Because also, the other thing is, a lot of time when I battle, especially when I battle in Manchester, half the room, I've already heard my bars because of my mates and I've sent it to them. Yeah, yeah. So they're not, they're not going to react the same way when it's said in the room as to, because they already know what's coming. Yeah, and I, do, I don't spit my bars to anyone besides Shotty. Like, Shotty's is the only person that will hear my stuff. That's that's See, what I mean. now, now I now I only send stuff to you and yeah. Jay Short. Yeah. I don't send anything to anybody else now because there's so many different people that could have opinions and stuff like that. Like I, I got to a point where I was sending them to like fans that were gonna be in the room to see what they thought. Yeah, and I, yeah, and that yeah. that's that stopped completely. Uh, just say one thing to you, and this is I think I've already had this conversation with you. I think, yeah, I did. When we was on the train to get Mad Flex for, for Apex, I think one of your, if I'm being totally honest with you, mate, one of your main issues is you built up a persona where you go into venues now and people want to see you lose. So you, yeah. as soon as you get in the venue, you're not battling just your opponent. People have already got the expectation that Jan's lost. Like it, it doesn't matter yeah. what he does, he's lost here. Um, so obviously it can work in your favour as well because when you do have a nice round, people go, oh, I didn't expect that. That was a good round. But when it comes to judges, they've already got in there. Jan's lost before the battle's even started. And that's down to a few things. I think your personality is so big as well. Like, in a good way and a bad way, people don't know how to... You're a bit like cheese and chalk, aren't you, Jan? You love you or you hate you. My Marmite. I am the uh, Marmite of battle rap. So people will go, oh, Jan annoys me, so he's not going to win this battle. I don't care what he says I'm still going to go if the, your opponent has three or four good bars they're going to go they were sitting them. yeah he definitely beat you that round yeah he definitely lost um, mm. so that's going to be hard for you to sort of change round just because of and obviously you don't want to change who you are as a person because that's you but you're always going to have that sort there's a few battlers that have had that um, trying to can't think of any off the top of my head but yeah. like, yeah, you know, for example, this, this, was, this is why me and him get on so well now. We did, we did that Spider-Man meme thing where we're just pointing at each other. Yeah. Because we're so, we're so similar. And this is what we said to each other. It's like, 
we we either we're either loved or hated, and all it takes is that one breakout performance, and it's like, yeah. uh, and that's why with what I've got coming next, that is my plan. That is, I've built this thing up in my head now of this is what it's going to be because we had a chat the other day about it because yeah. you're like you do know it's a <laughs> I was like oh right <laughs> um, but I've built um, an idea in my head of how I want that to go yeah. because that is going to be one where I'm expected three zip body bag nothing like no one's going to expect nothing from me in that one yeah and I know for a fact that I've got half a round already and this is the longest time I've had to prep for a battle as well. Because obviously now we don't know when it's going to happen. Um, but I'm still editing and editing and editing and editing out stuff. Like even to a point now where I'm scrutinizing little words. I'm not yeah. scrutinizing lines. I'm scrutinizing words and going, that doesn't fit right. Right, let me put that word there. Move things around. And yeah. now I've been writing what, say it's probably about a month since it got locked. And... I've only got half a round now because I'm, I'm keep going over it and keep yeah. changing little bits to make sure I'm at where I want it to be at. So where do you want this to go though? Where do you want battle? Have you got like an idea what you want to get out of this or are you just going to keep doing it until? Um, well, in, in the situation that I'm in now, obviously I'd love, I'd love to be on an apex of an all-star. That's something yeah. that I'd love to do. Um, I'd, love to, I'd love to battle in a different country outside of Ireland. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd love, I'd love to do that. In terms of the other stuff with helping you guys out, not gonna lie, I'd love to have my own card one day and just have a card that I put on. Yeah. Under obviously the the, the Bremier Battles banner, it's not like yeah, I'm gonna learn from these guys and then go fuck off over here. But that is something that I'd love to love to do. Um, I, I enjoy battle rap events. I'm probably one of the people that moans a hell of a lot about the negative side. But when I'm at an event, I'm always enjoying myself. Yeah. Whether I'm running around and stood at the front of a fucking thousand person line trying to get everyone to say, right, tickets on this side, physicals this side, digital this side, or whether I'm hosting Celeste versus Blitz. Do you know what I mean? I, I'm always enjoying myself. Yeah. So for me, I would love to battle abroad outside of Ireland. I'd love to do a big stage and I'd love to do my own card one day. Is there anyone you'd love to battle? If you could pick, like, say, two UK guys. Is there anyone you think you'd battle and you'd go, I've made it in sort of battle rap now? Um, I'd absolutely love to battle. I'd, I'd, love, I'd love to do a two-on-two with you, Nan, you know. You and just, you. For the sheer, just, just for the sheer fun of it. Yeah. I'd love to do a two-on-two with you, Nan. And I, I do want to do a two-on-two with Jay as well, because that's yeah. my brother. Um people I actually want to battle. Um I'd love to battle Rap Four in Ireland. Rap Four, that is Yeah. Yeah. I think I think he's really good. Um I'd love to battle See I I'm... it's hard for me because I've I I I don't want to battle like apart from Danny Jack, I don't really want to battle my friends. Yeah. I'd I'd love to I'd love to I'd love to battle Osh just to hear what Osh should say to me. Yeah. Just for that sort of side of things. If I ever got to battle Osh, then I'd I'd, I'd happily retire after that and just like, yeah, I'm never battling again. Um, you'd be amazed how many people say Osh is like the pinnacle for him. Obviously, obviously, if it, if the world was my oyster, I'd say the Tony D's, the Souls, and stuff like that. But at the same time, me versus Tony D, it, that it just doesn't make sense because I wouldn't. How could I diss a man that I, I look up to? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, it right now, but like that. Th this is one thing I think with battlers. If you're gonna look at the top guys and go, how how could I diss him because I like him so much? You're in the wrong game. Like this is what we're here to do. We're here to be, you know, like. Don't get me wrong. There's, there's, there's top there's top people that I think I could be. I, I could I could be if. Yeah. I carry on on the progression that I'm at now. Like I'm, 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 I know in my head where I'm at, right? and I know what I need to do to move forward. If I keep doing what I want to do, Matter, for example, I yeah. think I think Matter shouldn't have gone on this unbeaten run that he's gone on, yeah, because he's not changed from what he was six years ago. Someone he wants to just be, okay. has got to be a different way of beating Matter. 
And I think Yunnan will beat Matter. I think Yunnan will beat Matter. I really, really do. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you who I'd love to battle. Maverick. Love to battle Mav. What, you versus Maverick, like, now? Uh, not now. I'd, I'd need to get a couple more under my belt first, but yeah. I'd definitely love to battle Mav. And that's not because I think... I, I do think I could beat him, but I just know the aggression in that battle would come across so well between me and Mav because it'd be a thing one. Um, if you're going to be honest now, Jan, um, if you could put, like, forget tiers, top tiers, bottom tier and all that shit... If you could put yourself in a category now with three other battlers, who do you think is your category? Where do you think you're at? Right right this second now. Right now, yeah. It's pointless saying in five years because we don't know where um, you're Fanny Jack. Yeah. Um, Podge. Yeah. And... Hmm. So you think yourself a DARPA, DARPA. So you think you DARPA, DARPA, Podge and Fanny Jack. So you think you'd have a chance against any of them three now as well? Yeah, I'd, I'd, they're three people. They're three people. I would happily if if it come up to me and like, right, we want you to battle this person. I'd take all three of those battles and I'd be confident of winning. So who's the next? Just trying to gauge an idea because, like you say, some people will rate. Podge quite high less. Some people rate Danny Jack quite high less. Same with Darpo. Who's the next step up from that? Just give, just like, give me two so names. The next step up from that would be uh, Hades. Yeah. Um, Bizzo. Yeah. And LSD. Now, I'd never battle LSD. I'm just telling you, I'd never battle LSD because that's that is like fat battling families. Like you, you'd never battle shorty. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So I would never. But that's the next step up. So if you were talking, if you're talking tears, you'd put in you, Podge, Danny Jack, Darpo, and then say you beat all three of them. Your next three opponents would be Hades, LSD, and who else did you say? Bizzo. Bizzo. I just for personally for what I like in battles. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I was going to say some people would argue Danny Jack, for example based on his view count, would be bigger than all of them. Yeah, but look, at Jack Wheatland Watts has got 70,000 views, mate, and can't battle that to save his life. <laughs> you, and that's no disrespect to Jack, because that's a friend of mine as well, but he's got 70,000 views. Yeah. <coughs> he can't battle that to save his life. Danny Jack's only got the battle, the views that Danny Jack has got, because of the people that he's battled. He battled somebody called Deep Throw Thug, yeah, it went viral. Right. And it went viral. So right. he he battled, who, who else has he battled, though? He who battled JPEG that? in Ireland. And, yeah, Danny Jack won. He battled T-Kid. He battled Osh, which he booked himself. Battled me. Do you know what I mean? Like he's Danny's good. I'm not slagging Danny off as a battler because Danny's funny. Yeah. He, battled, he battled you. Do you know what I mean? Battle P Soldier, he's battled some big names, Danny. That, uh, that, I'm only asking because it's interesting to see where battlers actually level themselves out. Most people will go say, do the usual bullshit, like throw me now if Tony D will beat him now, but 90% of the time. See, for me, because of our subject, so battle rap is subjective at the end of the day. Yeah. For example, you think Crafty is good. I think he's fucking bobbins. I do can't stand the Crafty battle. I will not watch him. Why? I can't what, stand what? him. I just, I just don't like his style at all. Whereas there'll be people that absolutely can't stand um, the Gab style battles, yeah. like, like the street type battles. Like people won't like Rivers because they'll go to battles to listen to jokes. So this is why I wanted the Danny Jack battle because Dan, me and Danny Jack have two completely different styles. Yeah. So people, the people who love the jokes and stuff like that, are going to absolutely love what Danny's do because we know Danny's going to clown on me like fuck. Yeah. That's what that's what he's going to do. But it's 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 the seesaw of it of it's two contrasting styles, and it's with it being so subjective. I can only if you ask me a question about battle rap, I'm going to give you my opinion on what yeah. I like. I'm not going to be able to give you an opinion as a, as a whole. And that's why I'm asking. It's subjective because it's pointless me saying, "Oh, I think you're in a category with X, X, and X." If you believe you're in this category, that's why I'm asking because it's interesting to see where battlers actually put themselves. And, who do you think this should be going against? That's why if I, you'll know yourself, if I book you, 
I'll say, give me three or four names that you want to battle. For for example, like Crafty, I think Crafty is a great writer. I know, but he is he is a battle that a lot of people don't rate, and I, it's it's sometimes I go like, why why what why are they clicking with people? LSD for example, great writer, but he just doesn't click with fans a lot of the time, and it's 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 a why thing. Mm-hmm. Like, why, what's what's because when he battled at major when he battled major in the All Star game, the reason he won that is because the fans were on his side. He was fucking he. The fans were going off on everything. And, and, and the way he structured all through. See, this is the thing with Dean, right? And I've said to this, I've said to Dean two times that he needed to do this. Because um, me and, obviously, me and Dean always share rounds. Always do. Like that, that is one person that's probably one of my favourite people to come out of Battle Rap. Because outside of Battle Rap, me and LS Dean would not be friends at all. He's not a guy that I would go, yeah, I want to go chill with him. But yeah. now he's like, I do need to check in with him, actually. I've not spoken to him in a while. But we share rounds in it. And when he shared me the stuff for Major the first time, I said, that yeah. round needs to go last. And he did it. And he won three. It, like, in, in my eyes, he won all three rounds against Major, not to take away from Major. Yeah. Against Koji, he switched his second and his third after Koji spat around. Yeah. And it won in the battle. Uh, but, yeah. So... Just probably wrap it up and enough about other people. So yourself, yeah. Um I'm gonna clear up a few things, yeah. So I don't think you've had your chance to speak on these. So first one is what is this in Ireland about you running around saying you were running Premier Battles? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well have you not heard that <laughs> Boris Johnson's giving me a million pounds? Yeah. And then when Shotty when Shotty's like album blows up and Shotty like doesn't want to do battle rap anymore, I'm gonna come in, sweep over, take it off. I'm getting you versus conceited finally. We're gonna do um Joy France versus Little Kim and we're gonna have Shotty versus Two Pack Hologram. Wait, come on. Being honest, you was drunk one year and telling people you're gonna run. No. Hey, I, I got told no. from three or four people, Shotty got told, Bloodstone got no. told. Not at all. I so said that Bloodstraw was doing the Undisclosed event and I was helping him. That was my, my exact words. So there was no conversation of uh, you running Premier Battles when we go? No. Those words did not leave my mouth at all. So, so that's the official verdict, yeah? I don't, bro, you've not even confirmed me as staff yet, so how can I say go? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've just got to ask, because this is what people were saying. Um, and the other one is, what's the Lizzie C story? Right. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> right. So, if you remember rightly, yeah. the weekend of one of the Academy events fell on Paddy's Day weekend. Yeah. Right? And we had Scabman, Lizzie, Intimidation, Visual, all Irish coming over. Yeah. So, I said to Intimidation, Lizzie, because the new Scab was going back the same day, yeah, I think it was Intimidation and Lizzie said, look, <laughs> all come out with me and the family on Paddy's Day on the Sunday if you stay in there. And Lizzie yeah. was like, I oh, don't know what I'm doing. Don't know if, I, if I've got anywhere to stay or anything like that. So I've said, which I did with you with Podge, if you need somewhere to stay, I can show you about to stay, stay at mine. Said the same yeah. thing to Intimidation and his missus. Said the same thing to Podge when Podge battled Matter. So is this the, remember when Ty put the thing up saying, uh, we've got screenshots, is that what that was about? That's what that was about. So basically, you try to chirp something as you say. <laughs> what? I might have done when I was pissed. So you basically <laughs> invited Lizzie to stay at your house, yeah? In your head, it's just being a nice host. You're in another country. Yes. I guess I've then texted her when I'm pissed. I, I don't remember, but no, because Intimidation got the same thing. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So you have texted her when you were pissed? Probably. No, you don't know, know, you know if you've texted. I told Blue Fox to jump in a bath with a toaster when I was pissed, bro. So what have you been texting her when you pissed? I don't know, probably. Have you sent a dick pic? No. <laughs> oh god. So there's some truth to that. Probably. There definitely is. You would be saying probably. You'd be arguing it with me saying no, it's not. Like you just sit in with the running premier battles thing. You said no straight away off the bat. Look at your face. <laughs> I probably am, bro. I was probably sure, wrong, like, You so know I'm a so mad right. pub head. Just having a DM. Just having a DM. Um, so, yeah, so you've been in Premier Battles for falsifying. That never happened, yeah? Yep. 
Uh, you chirps in, Lizzie C. Definitely, definitely can happened. One million percent. I'll marry you tomorrow. <laughs> but uh, anything else you want to add? Anything else you want to ask me or anything else? Uh, no, let's just get this coronavirus out of the way and get shit popping again. We could, we could, we could surprise everybody with the end of the battle and announce my next opponent. Ah, we're all right. I've got a big announcement coming soon. Anyway, I don't want to. Oh, is that what you told me? I don't know if enough told you. You sent me a flyer the other night after a conference call with um, another member of staff. No, that's another announcement. All right, okay. Oh, so you've got something else to tell me. Get this record off now. <laughs> got a full year planned out, lad. But yeah. Yeah. That's stuff coming up, brother. <laughs> Make sure you click subscribe as well. Leave a comment below. Let me know who you want me to chat to. Um, I'm going to pretty much be talking to anyone I can sort of get hold of because this doesn't look like it's going to be ending anytime soon. Um, yeah. Look after yourselves. Make sure you click, like I say, click subscribe on the Premier Battles channel. Let me know in the comments below who you want me to talk to and get them wrapped up as well. Bless. Keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on. I've been waking at 10 minutes close. Another email that I ain't replied to. Another day comes with another stress. And I can't keep up if I try to. Man, it always goes wrong when I try to make right. And I'm always on the grind every day of my life. Man, I'm trying to turn a penny to a million. But I ain't ever paid no price. I don't know about the sacrifice. The lack of sleep. The writer's block. The lack of pee. The lost looks. The fake friends. And the same cycle to the day ends. Man, it's all the same. Fuck a snake. If my line don't ring, I don't want it to. So don't tell my line if you want to Cause I ain't got shit that I want to See I ain't got no, 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 no time for you Don't call me, there's no line for you Don't tell me what you're trying to do Cause I ain't got time for you There ain't no line for you